legend told by Hello and welcome. Today, we're taking a look at the Halo Infinite Chopper Takedown set from Mega Constructs. We'll take a look at what you get, as well as the pros and cons of using it for stop motion. The set officially retails for $20, or around £15, but as usual, the prices do vary depending on where you look. There's only two figures included in this set, but they're both big characters. Firstly, there's a fully articulated Blue Spartan. This is an official Fred figure from Blue Team. Fred's armour has been upgraded to Gen 3 to tie in to Halo Infinite, although Blue Team still hasn't appeared in Infinite yet. He's got his Spartan number printed on his chest plate. The choice of armour colour is quite bright, which is in keeping for the style they've been going for with the whole Blue Team series. It's great to see that Fred's shoulder knives are still a part of his design, even though they're not painted like they were in the Halo Legends booster frame figure. For reference, here's a side by side of those figures. They both use the same moulds, but are painted very differently. The second figure is Eshirim. Bear witness! He doesn't come with a helmet which would have been cool to have some kind of new custom helmet mould. His head has a little facial hair, but it's ultimately still the same Craig face we know and love. Having said that, the only other thing that makes this head unique is that one side of his head is scarred to match Eshirim's in-game scars. His armour's really unique and bulky, his chest piece has what I and others used to think were handles of two giant blades sticking out, although now I think they're just bits of decorative armour. He does come with a gravity hammer, but sadly it's just a normal gravity hammer. In the game, Eshirim wields a custom grav hammer called the Diminisher of Hope. Well, my hope certainly diminished that we'll ever see that weapon in Mega Constructs, am I right? Laugh. Laugh! The set comes with a dark military green Spartan laser, a grey gravity hammer, three of these transparent pegs, and a large machine gun turret that fires one of those pegs. There's two tan bases for the figures, and a brick separator. This is the Chopper, first introduced in Halo 3 as a plain grey brute vehicle. The Chopper has since had a red and silver makeover when the Banished were first introduced in Halo Wars 2. The themes of red and silver have carried over into Halo Infinite. The Chopper is a bike with a pair of giant wheels at the front and a hover plate at the back. It features a gun on either side of the front wheels which can move up and down, and the wheels themselves are spiked for traction and running over enemies. The wheels can spin and are connected together so that they turn together. You can't make one spin forwards and the other backwards, which certainly makes animating with them easier as there's less chance that they'll move in a way you don't want them to. In the middle of the bike is a technical piece so the front wheel can turn. It can spin 360 degrees round. In typical brute fashion, there's even more spikes dotted around the vehicle and the designers have done a good job adding lots of angle pieces which juxtaposes against the typical smooth designs of the Covenant. There's fins on each side that are transparent, but have a pre-printed decal on them which gives them a really unique look. Included in the set are two transparent blue bricks which can attach to the underside and make it look like the vehicle is hovering. There's a control screen pre-printed onto this piece, and there's handles for the pilot to hold. 
On the bottom, there's foot pedals which can move up and down. And there's the impression of a pilot seat made with these tan coloured pieces. The small details on the bottom of the wheel arches can act like stabilisers, and they're handy if you want to pose the bike as if it's turning. But they're only held on with one stud and have a tendency to pop off if you put too much pressure on them, which is something a lot of people bring up. When it comes to animating with the bike, it seems like it would be pretty straightforward, but it's actually got a few things to keep in mind. Here's a bit of footage I didn't end up using in the opening animation because I thought it went pretty badly. As you can see, I had the chopper rolling along the ground and it bumps up and down as it's driving forward. That's not only because it was driving over studs, which you could just swap out for a smooth ground surface if that was the only problem, but it's the spikes in the wheels that mean the whole chopper jerks up and down while you're moving it forward. So the best idea is to lift it up off the ground somehow. You could either use an animator's rig, like the professionals do, or you could use the bricks that come with it to hold it up and either just leave them in shot or edit them out afterwards. Also, this is super niche, okay? But when you're animating wheels, you need to make sure you're turning them at a certain rate so they don't look like they're moving backwards. That's something that happened to me in the opening animation when I wasn't concentrating, and because there's so many spikes on the wheels, it's easy to do. It's actually something that happens in real life called the wagon wheel effect, where wheels look like they're going backwards on camera because of the frame rate. But I won't go into that here. Maybe in a future video about animation I can talk more about that. Let me know. This set has an alternate build. You can create both a large flying drone and a little artillery turret. The turret doesn't do anything other than fire one of the little yellow pegs. Meanwhile, the flying drone can spin the round wheels like turbines, and its wings also move on small hinges. Here I mounted it on a clear rod to make it look like it was flying and to get a better angle of it, but the clear rod isn't included in the box. Overall, I'm really glad I was able to get my hands on this set. Considering that figures in the hero line, like Fred or Esherim, can sell online for pretty much the price of this entire set, getting both of them and a vehicle together is brilliant. Esherim has some nice unique armour which could easily be used for making custom figures if you're into that. Again, I wish he had his custom grav hammer, but that's probably being saved for his heroes figure. Fred is also great, and I'm really glad he has his Spartan number but he's such a bright blue that I can't help wishing he had a wash or panel lining added to him. The only obvious downside is, like someone pointed out, if they'd have included generic figures, it would have been easier to army build and buy multiples of this set. Also, as someone else brought up, why did we get Esherim in this set? Considering in Infinite we fight Hyperius while he rides a chopper, Esherim has nothing to do with choppers at any point in the game. So what do you think? If there's anything you think I've missed, please let me and everyone else know in the comments. Before a new review goes up, I'll make a YouTube community post showing which set I'll be reviewing next. So please keep a lookout for those, as I'd love to hear and feature your feedback. Thanks for watching, and take care.